Hello students, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University and we have another installment in our uh, lessons on compressor series and today we are talking about rotary compressors and so we have uh, two rotary style compressors that don't have any pistons in them. The first one we talked about in the last video segment was the vane style compressor and then now we have the other one and so this compressor right here is uh, getting very, very popular. We're seeing more and more of it. And the reason is because it, it's small. If you take a look at it, it's a very compact, small compressor. Uh, not necessarily light, but it is, you know, about 10 pounds, under 10 pounds. And so, um, but uh, we're seeing that an awful lot. And what's neat about these compressors is that they have a very unique look. In fact, anyone know what they are? Have you figured it out already? This is the scroll style compressor. And so you start looking at a, a scroll compressor, um, you know, it, it's hard to imagine what that is if you've never seen one before. And so I got some cutaways and we'll take a look at it. But as far as identification, if you take a look at it, the scroll compressor comes apart from the, from the front where you have typically uh, four sets of bolts. So you have eight bolts total that you undo. And the nose is very unique looking nose where um, you take these bolts off and you take the compressor off. Um, I don't recommend doing that, and I'll tell you why in a little bit, but if you do take it apart and look at the scroll, um, good luck on getting it back together again. You wanna make sure you mark the, the housing very carefully because it has to go back exactly the way you took it apart. Uh, the scroll compressors, uh, just like the vein style compressors, have a, has a thermal valve on it, so it's, it's right there, it's at the very end there. So, so when you see um, the wires to your clutch, that actually go through some other component, you know, probably it's a thermal valve. It's uh, sensing the temperature of the housing. If, if the housing gets too hot, uh, it will, it will uh, turn off the clutch. Uh, uh, this compressor also has, looks like your blow off valve at the very end of it. So I take a look at uh, this style here. This looks like very similar, you know, in guard. This is a used one, but you know, I got my thermal valve, probably came off of one of our students' cars. Right? diagnosed the back compressor but if you take a look at the front end you got your two you have four sets of bolts so eight total that you can see that kind of helps out you know this thing spins really nice um, has four sets of bolts sometimes at the end so that's another way to help help identify it uh, this other one here if I take a look at it um, it doesn't spin <laughs> And so, like, what happened to this thing? Well, I, I know what happened to this. The students took it apart because they wanted to see what was inside of it before I, I had a demo. And when they put it back together again, they did not mark the housing and they got it um, uh, out of sync. And so it locks up solid. And, and so the reason why that happens is I have this guy right here, which I'll, I'll show you. So this one is one that we do have apart. So when you undo those uh, eight set of bolts and you pull it apart, you have yourself, you're, you have a scroll, you have actually have two scrolls. You have your movable scroll that is connected to your input shaft. And so as I move my input shaft, you can take a look at that scroll and it doesn't rotate, it oscillates. And so you can kind of see how it oscillates. And so what happens is that as, as, it, as it rotates, it's gonna take the refrigerant from the outside and it's gonna push the refrigerant around, 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 around till it hits the very center, which is where the outlet or the, uh, where the discharge part is. So you have a fixed scroll that is in the housing itself, that's stationary, and then you have a, a movable scroll that is, um, that is uh, connected to the input shaft, and so you know, you're gonna squeeze that refrigerant together. Right? You know, back, back when you used to get kids and you would put your, your hands in, uh, in the water, in the poo, and you would squirt your friends or your siblings in the face with that. I was the older brother, so I was always the one doing that. But anyway, that's kind of what it is, is that you're squeezing the refrigerant from the outside all the way to the inside. The problem is, is when you take this apart, that if you're not careful, this scroll will lose its indexing. So right now I just spun it, and it does not do this in the car. And so now the problem I get into is when I put this together, I have 360 degrees of where that scroll can go, but only one way is right. And so if I try to put it together, even though I even though I marked my housing, if this moved, you know, trying to get that together exactly right is, is hard to do. There's um, 
there's a whole bunch of uh, ball bearings that are around this to help um, to help allow this to um, to oscillate. And when you pull this apart, the bearings fall all out. And then when the bearings fall out, it, it rotates. And once it rotates, uh, so I don't recommend trying to take these apart and rebuild them. That's for sure. It's just it's it's just to understand how they operate. But the key here is that it take a look at it. It's when I turn my input, my input shaft. Key is that it oscillates because it does not rotate. That's that's a key point on that. So I, I did have a, a student. We had, we hired students to, to help out around the student. And my one of my students um, in our in our fabrication area, they uh, they did a cutaway for me. And so you can kind of see as I turn my input shaft on this, that my scroll right there, that, that's my movable scroll, it's oscillating around. And it, and I can hear a little bit of squeezing of, of air coming out. So my fixed scroll would be this piece right here. My movable scroll is that one right inside there. And you can kind of see how it oscillates through there. And again, this compressor right here also has, also has, you know, it has that nose on it that's very unique, you know, it's very ingot on it. And, you know, you can see your sets of, four sets of screws on it. You see the bolts in the back, you know. So, so a lot of manufacturers are using these just because they're they're small. Um, oh, I don't know. I think they're a little bit more sensitive to, uh, to lack of lubrication. That's for sure um, on that. On this guy right here, I want to take a look at these guys right here real quick. Both these guys here. So this one here spins really nice. I'm kind of doing an inspection of my pulley. It spins around really good. I'm gonna take a feeler gauge and I'm gonna measure the clutch currents with it real quick and just see what it's at. Yeah, so I got a 15 in there right now, and that 15 is, is probably right exactly what it should be. That feels nice and snug in there. So 15 would be the low end of spec on this particular one if I was measuring it. Uh, I would actually look up the spec of the vehicle and see what it is, because the spec could be 18 to 25, or it could be 14 to 21. I don't, I don't know what it is, but 15 is, in my mind, the low end, uh, you know, and I say average of 20, so. So it could be fine, but it's a, it's a little tight. So so make sure that everything is okay. But it, you know, it, it, it's that bearing seems like it's uh, it's not dragging it all on the hub. Uh, when this guy right here, since you know students have taken it apart, <laughs> as I rotate it, I do hear rubbing. You know, I do hear that it's not rubbing smooth. The pony's not rubbing smooth. It's locked up, and so I you know I try to get my 15 in there. And my 15, no way he's going to go in there. And I'm not sure what that is. It could be a 1, it could be a 2. Still rotates, and so so I do have a little bit of clearance in there, but that clearance is very tight. And so so on this particular one, if I was inspecting it, there's more than one problem. And so um, I'm going to try a 5 and see if a 5,000th will go in or not. Oh, okay, a 5,000th does go in, so at least it's not totally locked up. But 5,000th is tight on this side. On this side, it's not as tight, but definitely it's over here on this side. And so, so more than one problem with this particular scroll compressor. And those are the scroll compressors. Um, this is Scott Norman, and uh, we have another video segment coming up, which we're going to cover the, um, the next series is going to be on our hybrid compressors. This is Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more uh, video information, you could uh, take a look at my vi my um, my video series on uh, the Professor Pintain YouTube channel. You can also follow me on uh, Facebook and a brand new webpage. Just look for Professor Pintain. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.